Welcome to Geek Aid, the show where three of the world's top, most smartest experts educate you on the happenings of the world and answer your gaming and nerd culture questions. My name is Saucy Mailman, and I am the lead bagel tester for the British Parliament. Uh, today, Rod Johnston wrote for me. My name is Geek Say. I am the ho- I'm I'm the host of the Canadian hit TV show Pimp My Zamboni. It's it's really like. They just like started it out because they just figured out about the Pimp My Ride on MTV. And it's a real success because there are more Zambodis per capita in Canada that than cars. I'd watch Pimp My Zamboni. Yeah, we tried to get Exhibit, but we got uh instead we, we, we got someone else. Um I don't know if you guys ever heard of him, but uh he's the late great Wayne Gretzky. That yeah, was a he's terrible good. joke. He's, that was a terrible a joke. Actually, I could have thought of someone but way better. Here, well, let's hey. let Rod do his intro, and then we'll give you a second chance at that one. Oh, let yeah. me think. My, my name is Rod, and I am a concierge at the Space Hotel. So that's Ooh. what my living is, me and Groot, my Groot coffee mug here. Um, Which uh, Space out. Hotel is it? It's the one that's just, like, popping up. It's going to cost, like, $9 million to stay there. So Who doesn't have that? I mean... It's pretty, uh, it's pretty pimp. Geek say, do you want to do another take of that joke or? I got nothing, dude. Okay. Maybe at the end of the podcast. Well, well I mean, if you're going to say late and great, you could have at least used a dead person instead yeah, of but like, Gretzky. Dude, I don't disrespect stuff. any dead Canadians, dude. Do you think I'm going to do that? No way. I didn't no know way, that bro. Canadians could die. Well, we turn into maple syrup vats, and then but as you... maple syrup vats, we, you know, put it on the snow, the cold snow, and then we put it on sticks, and then we lick it. Isn't that a... Do you guys yeah, really that's a real eat thing. that? That's a yeah. real thing. Yes, that's a real thing. Like, it's yeah. good. Yeah. I was... I mean... uh, so yesterday, I was at a coffee shop um, drinking some coffee, and they had maple syrup spice flavor, and I, I took a picture and sent it to Geek's Egg because it, it reminded me of him. Yeah. I, I, I mean, it was pretty funny. everyone... Everyone should know that our our group chat on Discord has a picture of maple syrup as the icon. So, I love maple syrup though. Can't even can't even knock it. It's so good, dude. You know, it, I don't know if you've ever had it, saucy. They have the like the maple syrup, maple syrup candy, yeah. the candy that's like, yeah. oh, that shit's so good. My uncle lives in Vermont, which is like the maple syrup candle capital of the United States. I mean, it's not Canadian maple syrup. Isn't that a rich is, people thing? Vermont? Whenever I hear people oh, yeah. talk about Vermont, it's rich oh, it, people. It's, I mean, there's lots of rich people there. My uncle's not rich. He's, I mean, he's well off, but he's not rich. And yeah. He's not like me is what you're saying. Not like yeah. as rich as I, I mean, am. You, you work for the British Parliament. And let, yeah. look at the ex- exquisite yeah. background behind you where you're testing. Yeah, that's babies. just my office. <clears throat> I mean, it's pretty pimp. I mean, so I don't know how like there's no, no one running around in it right now. Why do you test bagels uh, for the British Parliament? I don't get it. Do, do they want uh, it soft and chewy, or do they want it like? Well, you know, everyone's got different you know ways that they mm, like their bagels. Yes. We got to make sure that they're at the you know the correct you know level of quality that how we expect. How about the Queen? The British what is Parliament. the Queen like then? Uh, she's been lately. She likes a honey walnut bagel um, with just a plain a plain schmear. Yeah, nice. A if, schmear. She, if 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 you don't put a slice of corgi meat on her bagels, though, she's not happy because. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going there. All right, I I have to I have to I have to ask a question. So I've been waiting for the last 45 or 50 minutes to hear this story from Geeksay about his night. Oh, yeah. yeah. Geeksay oh, is an old yeah. Canadian man who had to yell. I I have this thing where I do podcasts with people who yell at small children to get off their lawns, and it's, I think I now Geeksay is that person here. I didn't I didn't yell at them. I did what every Canadian would do, and that's hide behind the police and call the police and just watch. So so yesterday I'm I'm doing work and it's about 1 a.m. Okay, and okay. I'm like, what is that noise? I just hear a bunch of noise outside. And I live in kind of I live downtown uh, Kamloops, British Columbia, um, and it's kind of the ghetto, like a part of it. And I have a, a four-story apartment building, and I, I just hear this ruckus coming from the parking lot because my uh, window f- or my like deck faces the parking lot. I look outside. There's no joke. Thirty five to forty kids in the parking lot drinking. What? And I was like, what the fuck? And then it, over in like the other section of the parking lot is like a huddled group of probably seven yelling at someone on the phone saying, I don't give a shit, Darcy. I don't give a shit. You're a piece of shit. 
And like, so I was like, holy fuck. So I run in and I'm like, I'm like, honey, honey, wake up. You got to look at this. And honey, she's it's like, Darcy. <laughs> it's fucking Darcy. Darcy fucking ruins everything. Darcy's the worst. So, so I was like, Darcy. okay, well, like they were making a lot of noise and they're being ruckus. And I was like, okay, whatever. I'll, I'll leave that. And then, um, cars start showing up and a lot of them start piling into cars and chilling and stuff like that. And I was like, mm. Looks like there's a lot of beer flowing, so I was like, I don't like that at all. So I was like, okay, I think I'm gonna call the police on these kids. Yeah, I have yeah. to. And then and then here's what broke the camel's back. Here's what broke it, guys. One guy <laughs> threw a beer can in my parking lot. I lost it. I was like, honey, give me my fucking cell phone. <laughs> Not in my parking lot. <laughs> yeah. And you know how this all ended? They they the all the kids downstairs were like Canadian world star. <laughs> <laughs> we just got it. It's awesome. Um, so I can see you out there in like your bathrobe and like bunny flip flops. Like, <laughs> yeah, those are the kids. That's the one talking about Darcy. And he was like, he was in his walker. You know, those like walkers with those tennis balls on the bottom. Like, so he like doesn't lose traction going. Yeah. Kids these days have no respect for their elders. So, so so they're piling into cars, like eight of them in one car, like shitty car. And I was like, fuck it, I gotta start calling police. So I called the non emergency yeah. line and then I started giving them uh just telling them where I live and stuff, and then they all started leaving. Like they all start I was like, Well, there's no point of coming. Like I was like, just to let you guys know, there's no point. I just wanted to let you know. Car they're piling cars, blah blah blah. And um, I felt really bad because there's three kids left alone on my, like, I have, like, this little Eve you can sit on in the parking lot. Yeah, yeah. And they're just sitting there drinking. And I was like, now I feel bad if the cops come because three just, like, 17-year-olds might get busted. But I wanted, like, you know, if you bust up 40 of them, it's like, yeah, you know, funny. nothing's going to happen. But three kids feel bad. But I think yeah, they just yeah. all left. They just all left. But that was, like, well, If it was maybe moment. five kids, that'd be fine. But three, <laughs> that's, that's what they, I feel well, bad. You did, this, six, this is the... They piled into six 1996 Toyota Corollas and, <laughs> those and ran away. Those are brand new here. Again, those <laughs> are brand new here. Um, that's the one thing, though, that I, I felt bad about is the three kids that were left here, you know they're not the coolest. If all 40 piled in cars and left and went to the next party or something, and then these three kids are just waiting at a stoop, you know they're probably the... Not the coolest one, so I didn't want them to get busted. They're just trying so. to play Pokemon Go and drink Pabst. Yeah. Oh, oh. Gotta now catch them all. And now they're gonna yeah. now, now they're gonna get, they're gonna get that elusive the jail cell Pikachu. <laughs> yeah, we record this podcast at about it's it's ten AM our time. Uh what is, is it nine for you then? It's nine, or, but now it's ten and eleven your right. time. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so that's about time for Pabst. Oh, we Raven. should get one. We should get I'd yeah. drink one right now. Dude, I, it's always a good time. You know, it's still one of my favorite things ever is ridiculous hats uh twitch he's a friend of the show i guess and he has a twitch emote which is a pbr can wearing a ridiculous hat yeah and so it's the best thing ever does he really i didn't know that <laughs> yeah cool. you didn't oh, see his, that's it's no. been his twitch emote for a long time oh, that's it's, hilarious it's, i have yeah. just the pbr can yeah. yeah i know you do but it's not wearing a pimp hat like no it's hat. not why does he love pbr that much Oh yeah, he, that's his like famous thing is wearing uh, drinking PBR on stream and us and wearing fun of him. PBR. Oh, we've got to. I gotta talk to him. I gotta. I've never yeah. talked to that guy. I gotta Guess talk to him. Bond over yeah. PBR. The Papster. Rod and I had a pretty good night last night. Yep, we had. Uh, uh, we do had we have to talk about we this? Had... I'm. I don't want to talk yeah. about I mean, this. Yeah, we do. I'm pretty we're gonna, upset. We're about I'm upset about Let's this. talk about this time where we hung out and Geeks Day wasn't mm. there, and it was a great time. Not yeah, saying was... that was the reason, but it could have been part of the reason. I'm just saying, I mean, guys, before you hear the story, I could have been involved if they just brought a tablet out and put me on Skype or something. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Well, you know, I'm just saying. It you, it could have been, but then everything would have sucked way more. <laughs> 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 Well, yeah, we uh we were hanging out down in the Colorado Springs uh, at the Andrews Living, uh, our, our friend of the show. Uh, he uh he had people over, and so me and Saucy were there uh, with some other friends from some other podcasts, uh, and we were eating ribs, pizza, drinking beer, yeah. and it was just good times. And then ribs. I I went back to Saucy's house, and we drank more beer, and we watched. Uh, uh, wrestling and saucy was yeah. introduced to wrestling for the first time in his life and it was a blast <laughs> so first i don't like ribs like at all but these ribs that andrew's living made were 
phenomenal. Like they blew my mind. And I told him, and I wasn't, I wasn't just making shit up. Those are the best ribs I've ever had. Like by far, what they was, were insane. Why don't you like ribs first of all? And why did you like these? I think ones it's then? they're always too saucy. Well, that sounds oh, weird. really, but yeah, no, like they're always just like thirty gallons. They encroach. They encroach on my brand. Yeah, it's it's saucy, like, and I'm the saucy mailman. It's like they're just taking a part of me, and I don't like that. No, usually ribs are just like covered in just barbecue sauce, and I don't know. They're just not. Were these dry ribs? They were dry ribs, but they had like some kind of spicy, smoky something, and he like had jalapenos on him that he wrapped in foil and cooked with them, and. I don't, and they had those like they were crispy and they were so good. Were I'm a sauce good. guy. Like I love sauce on everything. Well, like, that's why we get along. Guys. But yeah, but do, that's do you, not related. You guys to don't story. like a lot of things saucy, like pizza. I like to dip my pizza. You know, marinara. I like sauce. to dip my pizza in ranch. Yeah, I don't mind the ranch. I like marinara sauce. Extra. I always ask for extra sauce. I love that yeah. shit. I just, my wife, I, my wife dips me. everything in the the garlic sauce from like. Ooh. Pizza. That's yeah. just good. Uh, yeah. So, but so then, you like to, so yeah, yeah, wrestling. Go on. Well, I want to finish wrestling. Yeah, I yeah. have never in my life, and this is a true story, never in my life once seen a single wrestling match ever. And then Rod's like, "Hey, because Rod lives a little ways away from me, and so it was late when we were getting done with this. I'm like, hey, let's you can stay at my house. We'll go get some beers and we'll hang out. He's like, well, we have to watch this wrestling match. And I'm like, okay, you can do that, and I'll play Hearthstone. And then like. We we kick back a few brews and we're watching this wrestling game and I'm just like commentating wrestling the whole game. Thing. We're watching yeah. this wrestling. It was this game. wrestling game and then like there's all these dudes coming out and I'm like, what's this guy's backstory? And I'm like the the homie he like goes underneath the wrestling what the court the field the oh basket that they all go in the best. and. Yeah, he goes underneath it and he's pulling something out. I'm like, that guy's getting a knife. He's gonna pull a knife out. Oh my god! It was, it was so good. What's the? I liked uh, Angry Beard Man is the one guy I liked, and I liked uh, Ricochet, who yeah. I tweeted at, and he liked my tweet. Yes. Ricochet. Yeah, Ricochet. he liked Tommaso Ciampa, who's the bad guy, and he's the yeah. he's got a, a very impressive beard, just like is this so cool? and he's crazy. Or it's their it's their NXT, which is their like oh, minor NXT. leagues, but. Yeah. But exactly. it was cool. The one dude came out. He didn't even have a theme song. He came out in complete silence. Because he's oh, a bad guy. I'm like, that's so cool. Theme music is for, like, you know, good guys. He's like, fuck so, that. Yeah. I, my first time ever watching wrestling. I'm basically an expert now, and I'm going to start a wrestling <laughs> podcast. What wrestling What wrestling shows can we stream together? Um, I don't know. All of them. I mean, I, you I can't usually illegal. stream. Like, I, th- like I, I know guys that do things like wrestling podcasts, and they just... Uh, they watch I mean, it and then they like they put the uh, camera on them and comment it like at the same time. So but what if we just blur their legs? But there's a wrestling like category, couldn't we? Couldn't well, we I don't know. Like, so we have to look into they that. have like their wrestling streams. They've started using Twitch, right? Like they use Twitch as a service to get their shows out. So I don't know. I mean, we'll figure something out. We just need a we need a wrestling broadcast to want us to be the commentators, so Saucy can get his uh prime uh, knowledge of wrestling out and we can yeah. be famous there was a girl who had a freaking wooden pirate ship like steering wheel i'm like really? what the fuck is this is the craziest shit i've ever seen there's a chick with a wooden steering wheel there's a guy with a beard and doesn't listen to music there's it was insane there's a, he did like a triple backflip onto a guy through like two tables it what was about the most insane thing what about the fat british men that are called mustache mountain that yeah and i could be in that <laughs> I said I could try out for them. I'm gonna be in Mustache Mountain, and it's ah, oh, it was so good. Geek say is gonna be my you're my partner now in a wrestling team. In the so. Mustache Mountain Juniors. Yeah, yeah. We so just we're fun. just like stop, just stop, you stop, just yeah. We got this. I mean, you we would just actually like they come to do the the fighting part, and we're like eh. Let's leave. <laughs> do you it's guys like, like Hearthstone? No, do you guys like Hearthstone? Let's phone? settle this fight a different way, boys. <laughs> We're going to Hearthstone, and I'm going to play Kingsbane Road. <laughs> Except what would actually happen is then they're like, yeah, sure. And they pull out their like tablets and log on, and they've got the gold card back. And we're like, oh, well, I guess we've already lost. <laughs> wonk, wonk. Okay. Saucy. I think yeah. now that you, everyone knows you're a wrestling slash ribs expert. my favorite thing now. We uh let's go into news. Yeah, so speaking of ribs and uh sauce, so it's uh news article number one. This one it angered me like you ribs used to do. So 
there's this news article that popped up in our little show notes and it says Netflix experiments with promos between episodes in a series. And that just got my blood a boiling. I I'm sorry when I'm paying because there's multiple things that do this. Like I have paid for the N- NFL Sunday ticket. I have paid for the uh, WWE network and they have both done this. And every time it happens, I want to punch someone in the taint like repeatedly because I'm paying you specifically for your service. So I'm not watching it on TV and you're going to put these commercials in and it is like, I'm paying for your service and now you're going to make extra money. Go fuck yourselves. (laughs) It just it's upsetting. But I don't think they're making extra money off of it. I think it's just to promote more shows on there. Like I think what it is, it's like, oh, coming out next month or something is their new Netflix movie. You know, I think that's what it is. I'm not a hundred percent positive, but it's not like they're making money. It's just the fact that they're promoting more of their shit when it's still yeah, just they annoying. don't need to. But yeah, the, pro- the, the there's a quote in this and it goes, I pay money to Netflix to not have to watch ads, which is exactly the fucking thing you're not if i want to watch ads i will watch the 15 seconds of youtube bullshit and watch something on youtube i i'm I'm paying for netflix i'm paying for hulu i'm paying all these things so i don't have to fucking watch ads it's have you guys started getting double ads on youtube by the way yes okay okay so that's so annoying yeah they started doing double ads on youtube also and that's like i was like is it a canadian thing that they're testing out here because this is this is bullshit this is some crazy bullshit (sighs) not only is that but like my one of the things that pisses me off the most ever is when an ad comes on that's like 45 times the volume of the thing you're watching you mean Fortnite ads (laughs) <laughs> oh my god, they are. Seriously though, they are the Fortnite ads specifically are so fucking loud. Like I have to mute my TV when I'm in the middle of watching a thing on YouTube and that's just that's not yeah. acceptable. Like that's insane. There should be some kind of quality control. I I tweeted out the other day this just reminds me like if someone came up with an algorithm so that like when fucking Netflix TV shows, Hulu TV shows, like their intro music is always 19 times louder than the rest of the show. And so you you start the show and they're like they're often like the credits are in the beginning so you're watching it and you like turn the volume up and then the music comes on for the intro and it like blows out your eardrums and yeah. you're like I'm gonna kill everyone I I don't know why that's such a hard thing but it <laughs> seems to be yeah you- so this this is making me think I was just like while we were talking about this so let's say that you're playing a game so you're playing Destiny two and you you're like you load into the raid you and your buddies you all get together you're about to do a raid in destiny and you got you walk into the first room and then the game stops and it's just like try getting the destiny season pass with new (laughs) dance emotes and you like have to watch a destiny commercial for a minute and a half what if shit like that started happening if the game was free i'd be fine with it yeah if the game was free i'd be like okay this is just you know something we gotta deal with we gotta deal with it it's so weird because yeah that makes sense like you're talking about like you know technically like hearthstone doesn't cost any money and like yeah, Heroes, exactly. it doesn't cost any money nothing i mean it doesn't cost technically shit. it doesn't i mean if you're like sh- whales like us you spend lots of money on the game <laughs> but um like so like you imagine them like like rolling out ads when you loaded it into hearthstone for like oh this is the new battle for azeroth on uh yeah. like hearthstone it's just like that would piss me off too, right? So. But that's that's the thing. Like you said, like if it's free, I understand. Like there's a lot of like YouTube, I don't get as mad because I'm not paying for YouTube. But with yeah. Netflix, I'm paying money for them. And then to see their ads, it's just stupid. So it's the same thing. Like you pay money to play Destiny. And if they just put in an ad like that, I'd be equally as pissed. Yeah. It It, it is one of those things where where's the end? Like YouTube doing double ad, where's the end to it? And and problem about this stuff is all it will do is make us bitch but it won't make us stop paying for netflix you know what i yeah, mean like if they do if they choose to do this th- this is what's the scary part is is netflix is such a big giant and we use it so much yeah. that if they decide to do this stuff all we can do is bitch but we'll still use the services we'll still mm-hmm. deal with it because it's netflix and I have to tell you guys, I am sick of Canadian Netflix. I need that. We used to be able to do like this ISP thing, mask, and get American Netflix was so yeah. good. But now we can't even do it. So it sucks. Really? 
Yeah, no. I mean, that's a thing where it's always like, I often have like, you you hear people go, oh, what should I watch on Netflix? And you'll have like British people trying to suggest things. And all the Netflixes in all the countries are different because they're paying mm-hmm. for licenses in yeah. individual countries. So it's, it's, uh, yeah. I mean, do you guys have like, is it majorly different? I, well, I can't tell you anymore, but it was yeah. like, dude, it was really different. It was really different. Okay. We should go through yeah. it one day. We should do that later. If if you yeah. if we have two minutes, I should pull up my Netflix on my computer and you guys do it and we'll share screens and see what's up. Dude, I've I've actually started watching a Canadian television show on Netflix called Slasher, which is actually really entertaining. I've but never I heard know. of Slasher. What is Slasher? It, they made a serialized it's like a slasher movie, but like as a television show. And then oh, really? it's a it, they call it as a Netflix original, but it's oh. actually pretty entertaining. Is so. it? Yeah, yeah, I, I always tell people it's they probably watch... not in available in Canada. <laughs> yep. Um, um, so Netflix did say, or at least they were saying, someone was like defending them and saying uh, they were talking about if they used the promotions or the commercials to like advertise shows that you might be interested in based on what you're watching. Does that make it any better for you guys? Uh, I don't mind that as much, but it's like man if you do it where as long as i can skip it okay if you're gonna show shit yeah. and I, like you grab my attention with the beginning of it cool but if i can't skip the shit f- fucking sit on a moose dick because like at that point it's just <laughs> because that point not skipping being able to skip shit is what truly infuriates me like like when you get those fucking youtube ads that you can't skip after 15 seconds i want to start punching babies <laughs> well you're gonna like, have two guess... in a row now so enjoy those yeah oh. <coughs> fuck that fuck it yeah. in the butt. they need to have like a what if netflix had like a discover weekly like spotify does but for like shows that'd be kind of cool the thing it's... Of... The, the, here's the thing with, with Netflix, I think. The thing with Netflix is everyone's always looking for more shit because there's not enough on there and you've pretty much seen everything you wanted to see. Where Spotify, it's like there's so many bands you haven't heard, right? There's so no, many bands you haven't heard. That's so there is so much on Netflix that it's just the problem is a lot of it is just you don't know it's there, one or two, you don't like know what it is. Like I've literally had to go, I go on, I love bad horror movies. And I just love horror movies in general. So I'm always going on YouTube and searching out. There's these these channels that do like the best horror movies on Netflix because they and they make them all the time because Netflix isn't the doesn't same. Like them. it's always yeah, it it's always rotating. Them. So I'm always going through these and finding these things to look at specific things because there are so many horror movies on Netflix all the time that and it's the same with all these other types of things like TV shows and all that stuff. So you have to like. Netflix doesn't do a good enough job of getting you to be interested in stuff by itself. So like when I already have to go to other sources like YouTube to to get the content I want to figure out what I want to watch on Netflix, I don't know how them showing ads is going to help unless these ads are specifically super targeted like Saucy said. So yeah, so we'll see. I just hope it doesn't become a thing just because it's annoying. But speaking of Canadian TV shows, so here's another article that came across <laughs> talking about developers of quote unquote adult video games that are going to be launched on Steam. So it looks like Steam is looking into creating filters and product categories and such to allow adult video game developers to put their stuff on Steam. Um, but the article is talking about how, you know, where it weighs out and Steam is saying that could take months for that to become available. But I just wanted to see what you guys thought. This this is something that kind of like I, I hadn't ever really thought about before. But, you know, the adult video games becoming like a category on Steam. So I know there's this weird thing with Steam where you're already like they're assuming you're 18 or have like access to a credit card. How are they going to stop children under 18 from buying these things? I think that's, that's what point. the problem I yeah, think that's, that's the problem. I was just to I was just thinking that right now. I was like, you know, I, I always have to put in my age. I don't know why. Is there a way to automatically put in your age? Do you guys oh, that's. Have? I mean, they do that like when you watch like mature trailers and shit. Right? Yeah. So, but dude, I mean, 
anyone who knows like okay when we grew up like when the internet was first starting out like like you went to porn sites they're like <laughs> oh please enter your age it's like well i'm not gonna lie because i want to jerk off or anything okay i was born in 1954 oh wait not really you <sighs> you, i was yeah i was born in 1954 um a year before my mother i actually that's like i'm a time traveling uh... do you can i ask you guys a question about this when people ask for your age now on sites like not like porn but like say uh steam or anything and you have to yeah. scroll down do you just pick the closest one that's not near your age or do you do your age like i, I never always, do my age okay so you either i always do like 96 whatever's i just close scroll down and click yep, whatever's 90. quickest yeah i always do i actually something. do i always pick my year <laughs> Like that, I guess. <laughs> you yeah, loser. I'm just like January first, nineteen fifty. Let's go. I'm just trying to watch this fucking trailer. I don't know, dude. I'm uh goofy with and now that I'm turning thirty five on Friday, I don't know if I ever want to do it again, so I'm an old man. Yeah, this is it's actually like it's a fairly long article, but it's very interesting because it's also talking about like if they do start allowing adult games on their website, making sure that they put in, you know, filters in place to where people who don't want to see this kind of content, it doesn't show up in their newsfeed. Because if you are like scrolling through, so let's say you're streaming and you pop open your stream library and you're like, because I, I do this sometimes where I'm like, we'll watch trailers together to try and pick a scary game to play together. And then all of a sudden, like, tit simulator 8 pops up and you're like oh i didn't really want that to pop up in my feed great so it's just i it's something i'd never really like thought of like the you know the can of worms the implications that this could have of like adult yeah. content showing up in steam because twitch is never going to allow that happen or never going to be allowed you're never going to be able to stream this stuff you're never going to be able to play it on stream and so yeah you're going to have to be super careful as like a twitch streamer because if any of that stuff pops up in your stream, you could be banned, right? And banned very easily. So, yeah. but what what happens if we say stream on another website that's coming out? Do you think? Yeah, the, I mean there are so there are other services out there already that do allow this kind of stuff. Um, not without like I'm not going to talk about other services and whatever, but talking about Steam. So Valve, uh, they are launching a streaming service um called steam.tv which is gonna be considered you know like a competitor for twitch um which i think so i'm i'm always one to be like because i stream on twitch so i usually just kind of like don't pay much attention to other streaming tv services but it going through steam i think could actually be pretty successful because any pc gamer everyone uses steam like that's the it's just the platform you use it's just like oh you play games what's your steam id like okay but here, the here's the thing saucy do you watch steam streams right now of course not well exactly so what's the difference going to be right like that's the what i see it there's they, they allow streaming right now so what what's going to be the difference like i think it depends on how they how they one market it and how they integrate it into stuff um i especially if they did in games where like how overwatch has like their overwatch league stuff in game if they did stuff with like their specific products like if they maybe yeah. if they integrated things that way it could they're, be better they're definitely gonna because they wanted to do it for dota that was the big thing yeah. right so maybe like of course steam's very smart so if they're gonna market this they're gonna pick some sort of huge internet or invitational or international for dota 2 and then they're gonna be like hey come watch it on steam.tv and you get free shit and that like that's the way they have to market it right is yep. it's like gwent like gwent yeah. if you if you watch gwent on twitch tv you can link your accounts and you get some free shit so it would be smart if they're like hey you watch go to two streams you get some free shit or you get like or if you watch twitch or if you watch sorry um steam.tv maybe you get like Every once in a while, you have a chance to win a game or or money or something. Well, they have to do something because Twitch is, I mean, Steam is already, they're fucking annoying with how they handle that shit. Like, oh, you got this card, they're, they're, like their bullshit achievements or whatever. Like, they're always giving you going, oh, you got stuff in your inventory. And it's like, no, I don't. You're like giving me a card that does nothing anywhere. It's just like some bullshit Steam mechanism that I, I just basically end up ignoring when I'm playing this stuff or using it. So it's like they need to do something that is like actually going to 
grab people's attention because I don't know. I've never heard of anyone that's like, oh my God, I got another Steam achievement. Fuck yeah. I mean, it's like they have no motivation to doing it. And because they did it after like PlayStation had done it and Xbox had done it. And there are people in those ecosystems that really love it, but I've never heard of someone that's like, oh, I love my Steam achievements. You know, yeah. I mean, it does it doesn't have a tracking service that anyone gives a fuck about doesn't have value doesn't have a weight like I, I, did you guys ever get into achievements or trophies oh yeah no I, I i did for xbox 360 i really liked doing it and then like on playstation 4 i'm i've sometimes like i'm gonna i'm gonna plat this game and it doesn't happen very often but like i did it for horizon last year i really okay. really loved horizon um but and that's not it that's usually just because of the games i'm not, there are people that will go out intentionally play bad games so they could get trophies on until they get more i like was that points. person for achievements i really i was achievement hunter like i was i was i love chivos i called them chivos i love chivos yeah. like i would play airbender get that five, you know that five oh God. ten yep. minute you know um a thousand Flat. achievements like it was crazy how many games i've played i think i have eighty thousand achievement points on xbox right now and i haven't played in years and years and years and years i used to be Dude, addicted I, so the last one i did it with and i remember this was uh life is strange on playstation like the game is you can get through it saucy and i know you how much you love life is strange we talked I about it, again. it but the way you get the platinum in that game is you have to take specific pictures the entire time Okay. So like, so I would I would just have these YouTube videos up, and they were like, "Oh, you gotta take a picture here," yeah. and I would just take the picture, and I was like, "I'm already loving the game," and I didn't care because it was like no real extra work, and I'm like, "But that was the I last time I hated remember. Life is Strange." Yeah. Saucy, did oh, you hate it too? Favorite game of all really? time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, dude, you are you are a bah <sighs> humbug if you didn't like Life is Strange. That is one of the best games ever. I don't I like game. story games like that. I just didn't like it. It reminds me okay. of Click Adventures, like. uh like uh what's what are all those cl click king's quest no, space well, quest no like the, how they redid with um walking dead and stuff like i just couldn't get They're, into it. all the telltale, telltale games. games yeah all the telltale games i hate like i just can't like them and i don't know why man i love story-driven narrative games are like yeah. one of my favorite things ever uh i'm just gonna derail here for a second did you see the trailer for life is strange 2 no dude it's crazy it's only a minute long but you have to watch it. it. I still have to. I have to beat before the storm. I got. Well, this doesn't have anything to do with it. It's. A, I think it's a whole line or something. That's cool. Yeah, I'm excited. <clears throat> it's because okay. I... And let's move on from that stupid conversation. Okay, you know what? Let's talk about. Uh, let's talk about announced that that geeks say can suck shit. That's the next news article. And this is uh, this, this, this is why out. we didn't. This is why we didn't FaceTime you yesterday because you're a son of a bitch. <laughs> that's yeah. coming out in 2018, like the new game that's coming out for Switch. Yeah, it's not, it's not a new game, but no, it's a brand new game. So there's this new, new game coming out. Um, so Blizzard's this small game studio that just launched, and they have a new game coming out called Diablo Three. Um, it's it's the first in the series, but it's uh, titled Diablo Three. Is it but like Tetris? it's coming out to the Switch? Is it like Tetris? Uh, it's just do, like Tetris. Do, 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 do. Yeah, it's like Tetris, but with macaroni shapes and pentagrams. So it's Diablo. <laughs> but no, uh, for real. Uh, yeah. Nintendo Switch is getting Diablo 3 coming out. Uh, when are they? They say the end of this year? Yeah. Or sometime this year? Mm, yeah, sometime this year. It's coming out. Uh, I don't well, think they gave it a date yet. So this was like the first is it? No. Blizzard game they put on a Nintendo console since like the GameCube or the like the Nintendo 64, I think they said. Yeah, StarCraft for yeah, Nintendo yeah, 64. Starcraft. Yeah. Which is insane. I mean, well, I mean, they didn't they haven't put a whole lot of console games out like on a regular basis, anyways, because Blizzard doesn't make many games. Yeah. Uh, so I mean that doesn't I mean it makes sense, but man, Diablo is such a good game. Diablo 3 is such a good game. Yeah. And the, on PlayStation 4 and Xbox, you know, one, that game is awesome. And they did a really good job of you can play it with just, you know, a controller. But mm -hmm. it should be interesting. Are you going to be sitting there clicking your Switch the whole time? Like, instead of, like, a mouse, you're just clicking on the screen the whole time? I wonder if that... You know, like, the, the Joy-Con controller. I know, but I wonder if you can do that. That's what I'm saying. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> so. That'd be bad. I, th I think the big thing in this whole... Thing we should be looking at is how blizzard and nintendo are back at talking to each other 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I think that is the biggest thing. Mm-hmm. Well, you get the, if you pre order it, you get fucking uh, Ganondorf armor in the game, which is fucking awesome, man. That's really cool. I don't care. Ganondorf. So here's what I, because this actually interests me. I don't have a Switch. Um, I've never had any intention of getting one. Um, but so Diablo 3, I adored the game. I was back when we were talking about games you sat in line at for the pre release. I, I for Diablo 3, I was at the GameStop waiting to pick up my copy. I played, I took off some days of work for it. I love Diablo 3, but the most fun I have had with Diablo 3 was when we got it for PlayStation and just played local couch multiplayer with it. That was by far it for me the best way that I've ever played Diablo three. It was so much fun. Just like, cause you had that like nostalgia of playing local couch multiplayer and like, it was so much fun. You both being on the same thing. So something like the switch, if you could do it, like if the, depending on how it works, but like if, you know, I can bring my switch up to Rod's house and we'll fly out geeks a, and he brings his switch and we just like, it's way better than playing online. And we're just together drinking Pabst playing some Diablo. Oh man. That sounds fun to me. I might yeah. get a Switch. The, is... the Switch is an amazing system, dude. It it really oh, is. I, I bought imagine. my yeah. I bought my wife it for Christmas, and we, she's got uh, Super Mario Odyssey. But then we also got the Mario Kart Eight, and we had had that on the Wii U Mario Kart. Yeah, and it's still so much fucking fun, man. And the little controllers, like they don't look like they're usable, but they are. I have really big hands, and it's still like really usable. Uh, and the, it's got like the eight. They call it HD vibrations. So like it's like the best. I mean, it's the best for stimulation. <laughs> oh man, now I'm super interested. <laughs> but uh. The, the controllers are so well done because it's Nintendo. They don't make shitty hardware. Uh, I mean, they might make weird hardware, mm. but they don't make shitty hardware. Um, mm. Oh, I just thought of another thing. So I always talk about how well a game can do on the Switch is if it's good to play while you're taking a shit. Yeah. I just thought of a new thing. This means I could take this to work and play Diablo 3 at work. Yeah. I mean, I think, oh, you're, I, think you're, I think you're supposed to be working at work, though. No. No. <laughs> don't what is, no. No, no, no. The the big thing with this is, I think this opens up the door with maybe Overwatch coming, because it be cool. doesn't seem like it's gonna be. It, Overwatch isn't a big intense game, and I think they want Overwatch wherever they can get it. Yeah, and I, I mark my words. In one year, I could see Overwatch coming to Switch. I don't know if I don't know if it's. Part of the thing is with the Switch is you you want it so you can just play it with just the console and the two controllers on the end. But I don't know how easy it would be to play Overwatch on that without their their controller that you to buy for the system, the like actual controller. Um Why? because the buttons Why? are because because you need all the shoulder buttons to play Overwatch on the console. It is you need it for the because you're always having two mouse buttons you have to map and you're using like alts and everything. It's the game's already super hard to map to a controller because you basically need every button on there. So do um, they not have shoulder buttons on the Switch? They do, but they're not as they're not as easy to access. But they still and, have them. That's the big thing, right? Like, I, yeah. like I think what it would be is like if you want to just play it and goof off, you can play it with your regular Joy Cons. But if you want yeah. to be hardcore, you can get that, you know, the the yeah. fancy one. And I think that's what I, I think it, it's it, like they don't give a shit as long as as long as it's coming to the system, right? As long as they yeah. can put up uh, coming to the Nintendo Switch Overwatch. I think that would be huge, dude. You know, it's funny because I know that Doom wasn't easy to put on the Switch when they did it. Um, but like it must have sold well enough because the new one's coming out on the so yeah. if this Diablo does well, I can really see them doing it. I think this is gonna have to do well for that to happen though. I th- I think it's yeah, I, I think it's good. I think it's inevitable. I think you should get ready for it if cool. you want it. Yeah, it's rad. Yeah. I th- I think it's really cool. This just brought up a thing I thought about. Have you guys ever bought a console specifically for just a game? Oof. Yes, because uh, I have a lot of times. Oh, dude! I mean, I my I have a, a Wii U and a I have a Wii U, dude. I mean, it's yeah. we it was my wife wanted Mario Kart basically, and, yep. and then like so 
she loves Zelda too. And you know, the Wii U never really got a Zelda game until Breath of the Wild, and that was on the Switch too. So I don't know, man. I've I bought a PlayStation because I wanted Resident. I it's I always have specific games in mind when I buy buy consoles, but I think Nintendo is the the example of buying a system for a specific game because Nintendo does Nintendo things. So they're never going to have the latest and greatest third party games. They're just going to have Nintendo games, right? Yep. And so you're when you're buying a Nintendo product, you're going I'm not buying Call of Duty every year. I'm buying specific games that are like I might not get as many. Nintendo releases like one or two of their own games a year, right? And then there's other stuff. I mean, the Switch gets lots of games. Don't get me wrong, but when you buy a Nintendo product, you're usually buying it because of a very specific Nintendo game that you want yeah. to play. Well, it's, so. it's Mario, Zelda, yeah, Smash Brothers. Smash, yep. Those are the Trinity, right? Like that's the Trinity because yep. all those games have variations, right? It's Mario Tennis, Mario, uh, you know, a Kart Racer, or it's Zelda, or it's Smash Brothers. Like those are the the Trinity of of games. Have have what uh, what systems did you buy, Saucy? I want to know. I have I, every, I've done the same thing. So every I know. system I've bought has been specifically for just one game. <laughs> I was just thinking about it because we bought. The so I, I bought a Wii U and a Wii specifically just for Smash Brothers and the Wii U that was the only game I even had for it and then we ended up selling it. Um, the Xbox 360 when it was first announced, I bought it because of the trailer for the Sonic game that was like the worst game ever and that was the reason I bought the thing. Um, so we bought an Xbox One specifically for Destiny 2 and then we bought two PlayStation 4s just for Destiny 2 because all of my coworkers played Destiny 2 on PlayStation and not on Xbox. So then we bought the PlayStation so that I could play with them. And like I have my PlayStation sits right here and the only game I think I've I've played uh Final Fantasy on it and Destiny and that's it. Yeah. <clears throat> I think that's always the case though for systems right like you have to want to play a game like for me uh the dreamcast was um fantasy star online which yeah. I, which i'm telling you the dreamcast was an amazing system way oh, underrated so good, it was dude. so good um the xbox original xbox i bought for halo 2 the yeah. xbox one i bought for gears of war oh dude and... i love that so my wife and i first started dating when they were like when gears of war was about to come out yeah and that she always like gave me shit because that mad world uh like yeah. Yeah. the ad they did for that game was so fucking good i would hear mad world and i would be like touching myself because i was like oh my god this looks so good because the song was so good that trailer was so good <laughs> gears yeah. of war is still one of my favorite games ever like all three of them were so good um on the 360 i it just yeah I, that was a couch co-op like yeah. great amazing game like when i think of couch co-op and you think of diablo i think of gears of war it's it's yeah. so good uh but you know what gears of war has always been the game i've bought and when it came out because i'm like okay this one i'm going to get into the multiplayer like i don't know if you guys have ever had this where oh. you're like okay this game i'm getting into the multiplayer this time because i i love gears of war but the thing was i only like the story I would yeah, I'd yeah. play multiplayer and I'd be like, yeah, I don't. Yeah, no, yeah. not for me. It's I, I've done that with fighting games. So like I'm going to oh, play. Good call. I, yeah, yeah. I'm I bought Street, Street Fighter, Fighter 5, five yeah. and I bought like yeah. I bought the fucking I have the giant joystick <sighs> control. Oh, awesome. Man, you went all out then. Oh, dude, here. Uh, just a second. I'll be right back. I got to show you guys. Okay, get now the box that Kleenex. Gone. Get the box yeah. Kleenex. <laughs> so uh, let's get let's get into our, our podcast here. And, uh, so uh, yeah, it, Rod, what do you think about? Uh, oh shit, he came, he actually came back. Oh wow. Oh damn, that's nice. Yeah, that's nice. That's really. This good. was like oh, this is a, a lot of money. How yeah. many times have you used it? Yeah, I have not used this thing in years. So, and the, box, the box of tissue will don't won't have stories like that. <laughs> I did that with, uh, I think it was Tetris. I'm like, I'm going to get into the multiplayer. But man, the story just keeps me sucked in with that game, man. It's good. Man, there's, always, you, there's always those games, though, that you think, like, I'm going to become an eSport. That's how I thought. Like, I'd get into Street I did Fighter that with V, and I'm going to be an eSports star at Street Fighter V, like when I was younger. Or Street Fighter Four. I did it with. And I was like, I'm going to yeah. do it. I'm going to become really good and become, like, really good at the game. And then, like, a week goes by, and you're like, 
I still don't know how to do this combo, I man. Shit, like, yeah. I don't get this combo. This is annoying. Dude, fighting fighting games are a thing that you have to be obsessive compulsive about, or you're never going to be like like a uh, like really, really when they talk about frames and you're like yeah. i don't get it nope i'm out i don't nope. i don't get it that was uh i did that real hard with starcraft 2 i was like mm. wanting to be an esports lord with that and like i i got pretty decent but then like i hit a point where i like got into that next tier and just could not win any games anymore i'm like ah, you know what maybe not for me i'm done your, your apms were never good it, i was i could never play zerg i was a pro <laughs> toss boy I did that recently um, after DreamHack Denver. Um, I I wanted to get into Counter Strike, and I had never even played the game. Wow. But I, I came home, and I'm like, you know what, Counter Strike's in me because I love I love watching Counter Strike. And really? I got home okay. and I ordered a new monitor with my 144 hertz so that I could play Counter Strike. Never even bought it, but I was gonna be the Counter Strike Lord. I bought all this shit to be the Counter Strike. Here, here's guy. the thing, though, you know that shows how good live gaming is like if it's if, so good i've never been to one and i'm really excited to to one day go to something because if if the, and and that's what scares me honestly about hearthstone is i don't think anyone's ever been like i went to the hearthstone tournament and it was so i was so jacked and blah 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 Dude, it was if with dreamhack denver like saucy was talking about we like there were literally by the time like the last day was going on Everybody was doing their own thing, and there were like twenty people watching the uh, actual like six the tournament. Yeah, the, the sixteen the people playing, and I'm just like, oh. Man. That's was, what the I heard first about, day, oh, yeah, God. the first day, like it was lit. Like there was a lot of people there, but I think the problem with like car any card game tournament is they go so fucking long. Like whenever I'd play in Magic tournaments, it'd be the same thing because like you play eight to ten hours a day for three days in a row, and it's just like so damn much and same thing with the hearthstone like well I, I don't know about you rod but you played in it too right yep yeah so i was competing and like by the time i knew i couldn't make top 32 or whatever i just stopped i'm like all right i'm gonna go do other shit um so like day two i didn't even like go because i'm like i could play day two and maybe make it but i would had to win all my games so i'm like you know what i'm gonna go watch counter-strike so like it's just I think it's and how good was it? How good was watching it? It was Counter so <laughs> fucking good, dude. Counter Strike Live is a blast. Also, uh, the Quake game, what is it? Quake Legends or whatever. Yeah. That yeah. game is super super fun to watch live. Was it Quake Arena? Yeah, that so one. What, what, so yeah. what 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 is it about these games you think that suck you in when it's live? When it's Overwatch? When it's CS:GO? It, like what is it? It's it's like being in a stadium, dude. Like when you go to a professional baseball game, you go to a professional whatever, you are sitting there and the energy in the air is what gets you, dude. Like uh, Saucy will probably confirm this. Like the, the, I didn't, I've never heard people be so fucking crazy as this during yeah. the Smash Brothers. Like the Smash oh. Brothers motherfuckers, you could hear them across the entire place because yeah. there's like, 200 of those motherfuckers just going, yeah, he jiggly puffed him to death. Or whatever it felt like being happened. at a concert. Like you got people yeah. throwing each other around and screaming. And like, yeah. it felt like being at like, a, like the only other experience like that is like when I go to a rap concert and there's just people like throwing each other around and you're just like all hype on this thing, and especially what's... for like the, the counter strike, just like the, the energy, but also like the showmanship and they have the casters and like all the lights and like the overlays and like they have the cameraman like go through the stands and like it's it's just it's like being at like a football well, I won't say football hockey because you can relate to that at like a hockey game. I it's, wonder it's, it's what's the biggest one we can all go to like what's a really good esports kind of I mean, tournament we can all head to. The PAX ones are always really big. Uh, yeah. Any of the Dream Hacks are good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's just make. Cool. Let's just do a Dream Hack or something next year. Okay. Yeah, I, I'd love to do that. I'd love to do that. Let's try to get on a panel or something so we can get it paid for. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Oh, but it's got to be like a really like because I one thing I could do a panel on is like bagel testing because that's yeah. what I do for no, a living. No, you're the, you so are the bagel that. tester. Yeah. I mean. As soon as like America picks up Pimp My Zamboni, you, you'll be able to. Fly, they'll fly you everywhere. You know what's weird know. Is, is when you when when it bounces, like when the Zamboni bounces, it's not good because it smashes yeah. the ice. So we're still testing out how to like come down really softly on the ice, though. 
Well, I know which I know which gaming event we shouldn't go to altogether, and that's apparently the Dota Two International. <laughs> so I don't know if you guys follow Dota Two at all. I like watching Dota Two. There's a lot of games like this I don't play or have any interest in yeah. playing, but I like watching, yeah. and I like watching games like Dota Two. So they had the Dota Two International this week, and the stream was just a garbage pile of technical issues. I'd like to like they, I, I'd like to blame that it's not because it was in Canada though. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Not because of that specifically. Okay. Yeah, but they, they had like a lot of downtime, like the stream went down a bunch. There's just a lot of things broken. And a lot of the criticism they got is because it was such a like high value expensive tournament. Cause it was like what, twenty some million dollars or more? Jeez, dude. It was more than it was a ton of money. Yeah. And, and like they still like so oh, they said that the company made roughly sixty eight million dollars on this tournament and they they couldn't handle a live stream and so like there's just a lot of a lot of criticism going on about that it's the problem is too there's a real big issue with when this shit happens because the overwatch league was done so well yeah that like these other companies look like fucking idiots when this shit happens they look like complete morons because blizzard has had I mean, they've had small technical issues like with like games pausing and shit, but from a broadcasting sense, they haven't had any fucking problems. And these idiots come up and they're like, uh, and then they just fall flat on their face and they look stupid, man. And it's like when that kind of money is involved and you you fuck up that badly, man, you it does not go well for the home team. So, yeah, but here's the thing, though, like to do something like this. It takes so many different people, so many different, like you have to, you know, it it could be so many, it could be one little thing and you have everything set up and then it was one little mistake that really messed up everything, right? And I think we're still in the era of, of figuring this out you know companies are still figuring it out like oh yeah just hire us where we've done this many times and then i feel like there's a lot of times these companies could be shit companies and they could just talk their way into broadcasting and i feel the yeah. same way about hearthstone right lately there's been so many issues with the big hearthstone tournaments and i think it's just like you know it's not blizzard that's doing them it's like these other people are hosting them but they're just doing it for blizzard and they just have trust right like that was the big thing is is uh what was the one that was just in asia um uh sol was it sol what what just happened that where it was just a gong show everyone was pissed i don't know oh yeah it was it was sol or something and everyone was mad because like they had like all these games uh allocated for one day like they had like one one uh one set was going to take it um i think they gave it like an hour or less and everyone's like how is this possible like this isn't going to happen like you know what i mean like this won't happen and i think that's the issue right is we still don't have a a recipe down packed where like like this is the company yeah yeah exactly yeah i can see that it's it's yeah. tough though when when there's so much money on the line, right? That's the thing is is they want to grow esports, they want to make this the next big thing, but like it's like if if the Super Bowl was happening, and then the, the stream went down, and you're like, what is this? Like, what yeah. is this? Well, if I don't know if you, I mean you guys don't really watch football, but it was like five or six years years ago, they had all the problems, the power. And Super Bowl, the, the power Super- went out. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. And- I watch sports too. I know sports that aren't hockey, mother effer. Could you relate this to wrestling? Because that's the only sport I really know a lot about. So it, it's like when you're at a wrestling and the ring breaks. Okay. And, and they don't mean it. That's, that's like the basket it. everyone wrestles in. Yep. The ring? Yeah. Except oh, when they don't bad. mean it. Sometimes they want the ring to break. but Yeah, but last night like- the dude broke the ring on like – intentionally yeah that's because he was beating each other up yeah so (laughs) yeah that's just something just something i want to throw out there is a a quick little a snippet if you will yeah but we have way more important things to talk about than dota 2 no one even heard of that game because we guys we have to do our job now this is the part of this show we have to work at because we have been entrusted with your guys's questions this week um thank you again every single person who sent in a question uh again i say this every week i love you all and it means a lot 
because you got to keep us working and keep us going. So let's answer some questions, guys. You ready for this? Yes. All yep. right. Let's do the thing. Do we have to? Do we have to switch the thing? Or is it working? Yeah. You know what? I uh, I didn't do it for the for the news. Let's do it for questions at least. F it. Oh, that, that's the wrong right. one. Even let's just do another one. Here we go. Boom. I'm, I'm gonna read off this first question. So we got a question from Gibbsy that wants to know what character have we always wanted to cosplay as but never had the balls to do. Man. I'm, okay, you that's go. That's hard. Bro. Uh, well, here's the thing. I've never cosplayed. So it's not okay. like I, I'm just throwing this in the question of like, what would I cosplay as? Like, it's not I have the balls to do, but what would I want to cosplay to? If it never had the balls to do, I would say someone with shirtless, like Thor or something. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, there's chunky Canadian Thor looking pretty good over there. Oh, man. Look at this <laughs> chunky Canadian Thor. I, I thought looking at you today, you were cosplaying as the brawn paper towel bounty man with your <laughs> your uh <laughs> you're a dick. with I your plaid shirt. shirt i love my <laughs> shirt this is like a canadian staple everyone has one okay i'm, I'm gonna give you an axe and i'm gonna have you like pose like like Just... this and uh, yeah. i'd like it all right well i can answer this then uh because i adore cosplay i have a lot of friends that cosplay and like are really good at it so one I was going to do, but never did. I, for whatever reason, I, don't, I just ran out of time. I was going to go to this last Denver Comic Con as Noctis from Final Fantasy um, because at the time I had black hair and no beard and my hair was very similar to Noctis. So I, I'm like, oh, I could pull this off and I was going to do it. And I just didn't, I don't remember. There's really no reason why. I just didn't do it. But one I would love to do, um, there, was a, there was a stretch of time in my life where I was super into For Honor and that was another game I was going to be an esports god in because <laughs> I'm the best at everything. And I wanted to cosplay as the Warden from For Honor. I don't know if you guys have ever played it, but he's a oh. big armored knight guy with a huge great sword. And I, like, how cool would that be if you're just wearing this giant suit of armor walking around? And so, then you're figuring out how to do the armor. You're like, oh, it's this, it's yeah, this foam I have to like, use. And you're like, oh, oh, a little too much. So there's a funny thing with like, I, I, I told it before, I tried to make a turn a nerf gun into a gears of war lancer and so that was like the closest i ever got got into cosplaying and i gave up because adhd and i could do something for 10 minutes and then get distracted and go do something else so that was the closest i've ever come to cosplaying um i think that those gears of war dudes would be dope to cosplay as though like and i've seen people do really cool cosplays as them um man I, I respect cosplayers a lot, though. I mean, those guys oh, yeah. put their heart and souls into that shit. And I've started following a bunch of people who are, like cosplayers and just like tweet out like really, really cool costumes that they've worked on. And I, I, I'm always impressed by it, dude. I just I've never felt the need to do it myself. But if if I could do it, I might. I don't know. It's fun. I did. A, I, you, I think you've seen it. Uh, I did made my own Renaissance Fair costume. So I made this like warlock, like with this like evil like staff that I made with all these demonic runes and like a bird head at the top and stuff. Yeah. So I made a I made a costume for Renaissance Sir, which was pretty fun, and I had a good time. I actually streamed making some of that. I think. Cool. So that's kind of cool. Okay. <laughs> you who wants to talk to the next one? Uh, Rod, do I... we do wild cards? Okay, cool. So we had wild card asked us. What do you think the next generation of consoles will come out or will it evolve into services that you sign up for? I think that there will be a new PlayStation. I think there will be a new next Xbox. Uh, I don't know when, though. Uh, I've, I've already started hearing rumblings about PlayStation 5. Um, I bet you if anything comes out, it will be around 2020. Uh, we're at the point where these consoles are starting to be they're just right now they're just making like like the, these niche versions of the consoles the current consoles they make the super like high definition versions where they're like are outputting in 4k and all that stuff um and i think if that happens it will probably be in the in like sometime in 2020 um i just think it makes sense time wise that would be seven years in between console cycles because the Xbox One and the, the PlayStation 4 both came out in 2013. So I think that makes sense to me. 
Yeah, I think I think we're getting to the point where now consoles. I I don't. I'm not an expert in this. I'm just making shit up. But in my mind, I feel like consoles are getting less expensive to manufacture than they used to be because they're really just like computer po- components. They're just specialized computers that do a a single thing. Yeah. And so like seeing like they just had the uh, the Intel AMD partnership, the little like the new Skull Trail thing. I don't know if you guys saw that. The mini oh. computer. Uh-huh. So. It, it has a it's really cool it's basically on one chipset it has an amd graphics card and an intel cpu that are bonded together in the circuitry and you can buy it it's a tiny little like standalone the computers i'm making this you audio listeners can't hear this but it's like the small like the size of my head and uh, it's Xbox. a like a gaming computer that you can buy and it's only like i mean it's kind of expensive because it's specialized but it's like 700 bucks or something for this tiny little slimline thing so i think as we get things like that where we having these like specialized chipsets and you know things are easier to come about we could do it more often so i, f- I feel like we're gonna get another um you know console generation because i think there's always gonna be console gamers like it's just a, a thing so we'll get another one here's the next thing. week uh, that's my prediction uh, next week uh, there's always going to be because they want to be the, the you know Xbox was always pushing for being the set top box you know what I mean they wanted to be the all around like your DVD player your Netflix player your internet player yeah. you know what I mean like they want to be like that's what they're always striving for uh, and I think I think Xbox is definitely going to announce it at next to E3 I think they want to come out of the gate because they're behind on PS4 right now like they lost this generation Xbox knows that right they lost this generation I think they'll want to get out of the gate as soon as possible and put it out before uh, PlayStation 5. They're going to want to. What I think is going to happen is there's going to be services where you can stream games now. I, th- I think that's going to be the next big thing is... I mean, go on. Sony Sony invested a huge amount of money that that one streaming game streaming yeah. service and, and then flopped. never did anything well it's because of the delay you know even if it's like three yeah. milliseconds or whatever you know you notice that leg right so what i yeah. think is going to happen is someone's going to really come out with it being amazing and it being like wow there's no latency at all and i can just rent this game for a day like that's going to be the next big thing and it's going to be yeah, tough in places like Australia and stuff like that. But like even the services like Xbox has right now, say where it's like, I forget what it's called, but you can just, they give you a bunch of free games, right? Like gears of wars on there, all their halos and stuff. And you pay like 30 bucks a month and you can download whatever games you want. Like that is unreal. Like imagine steam did that, right? Like, well, it's almost like a humble bundle thing, right? Where steam's yeah. like, here's the games that are free this month. Like just give her like, that would be unreal. Like a, a, a service like that. And I that think be really that, cool. Yeah, I think you know EA does it only for Xbox, which is awesome. Called the EA Vault, and I used yeah. to be subscribed to it when I was a big Xbox gamer. Here's all. Here's a whole bunch of older EA titles. You can get the beta for free if you're in it. Um, you can get like ten percent off if you buy something new through it. Like it, it, it. The the idea is there. I think it's just our technology has to evolve. Just like you said, with this new inner or this new computer that's happening, I think everything just like I think there's ideas out there. I think what happens is the technology or the internet speed or whatever it is has to catch up to our ideas. Yeah. And one day when Canada gets off a dial up internet, you may be able to play these services. I'm on satellite, baby. <laughs> I'm rich. You guys ever heard of satellite internet? Yeah, it's real good. I, I, but I think I think VR is going to be the next big thing. I, I definitely do. I think it's going to be five years down the line, though, and I think that's what's going to take over. It's fun. It's good. Yeah, it's, it's a blast. Like when, we talked about last when you week. Come out, when you come over to my house, Geeks, we'll play a bunch of yeah. VR. Oh, yeah. Should we talk about saturation gaming here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, do, do, do. Saturation gaming, thank you for this question. Um, he asks, I really want to get into streaming, but setting up all the software and hardware is really daunting. Do you think that OBS could make money off of something like a concierge service where they would help you set things up? And this is kind of an interesting question. Like I've yeah. had, I've had many people come to me and ask like, like Hey, um, you know, what is the best way to set up this software, this audio stuff, this video stuff, all of this to make it work. So do you think like the company themselves could do this where like you could pay a service and they'd help you set things up? Maybe, but the problem is, as you guys know, 
streaming isn't something that is you set up once and it works forever. Every time you stream, shit fucking goes wrong and stuff like that. You need to discover the basics. I I really think that like maybe OBS w- needs to do a better job of having like tips and tricks and in like help videos. But man, if you go on YouTube and like search, you can find anything you need to in Google articles. It's all out there. It's just not in one place. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think. OBS needs to do that because it's it might work, but man, then you would start having problems and you would be back at the same point again. Yeah, I, I think they're like I I could see there being a place in the market for something like this. Probably not from the company themselves, um, just because they need to try and fix shit that's broken to begin with. Uh because it's it's free software. Like it's, you know, yeah. so I think there is some like a company. You, there could be someone that makes money doing this. I just don't know what that would kind of like look like. Yeah. I had a buddy. It, it's a good idea. I had a buddy that wanted to do this. Okay. So what his idea was he'd set up everything for you. It would be like this one shot. And then in the price came three months of free help. So if you needed questions or something like that or something broke, he'd be there. And then if you want to extend the help, you know, you know, you can pay for a plan. This is a good idea. I like this idea. Mm-hmm. I, I think they're, you know, if someone is well off and doesn't have the time, say they're working a lot and wants this, I think there is a place for this. Um, the issue is, like you said, things go wrong all the time. And I think to stream like we've always talked about, it's not as easy as just turning on the stream and streaming like there's so much more to it and if i feel like if this is your hurdle just setting it up i I think you all stream anyways yeah yeah i think it's not going to be for you then right you're not going to be interested enough but i I get what they're saying like if they are just wanting to do it for fun you know they could do it but like if if you just want to do it for fun like this i'd say do it through the playstation 4 or yeah do it on the console yeah yeah Yeah, you know i i think if if but if you really do want to make a go of this i think there's so like when people ask me this question i I try to help them out as much as like how do you set up blah blah blah. i i try to you know i like nerd or die nerd or die has really good videos on how to set up obs you know see things you see on a lot of people stream they have it um they have every a lot of stuff for that and i, I like to point people in the right direction um because if you do something for everyone um it, it's it's you're not helping anyone right like if i just yeah. could come into your stream or if into your computer you get allow me access and i do it all you're just going to always be asking, hey, how do you, like, how did you do this? How do you do this? And I do this with people. Like, like my buddy Danny helps me out, but it's because I don't know. Like, there's certain things that are really hardcore, like audio. I don't, I'm not good with audio splitting. Audio so I need help. With, yeah, audio is very tough. So I need help with that. But when people ask me things, it's almost like a test. You know what I mean? Like, I'm almost like, here, do it through this. And if you, you know, if, if you try it and and it doesn't go well or something then come talk to me you know but like you kind of have to see like how committed are you to doing and that's what it's about right like like if you want to get sponsored by a company like just start hounding companies right and that's the thing not many people will do it so you know if i tell you how to do something let's see how far you'll take it right like let's see how committed you actually are and then i'll come and then i'll give you my time because uh, everyone's time's precious guys i'm sorry to say everyone's time's precious so you know if you if you try it and i see oh you've really tried you can't understand okay let's let's figure this out together but you have to give it a shot man we all had to or like if you come with specific questions like hey i was doing this and here's where i got stuck okay cool but it's like hey set this up for me Meh, meh yeah it's Again, like you guys, I think that was the perfect statement. It is a test of how much you want to do it, even get going. It's And if you would just want to do it for fun, play through PlayStation 4 because it's really easy to stream through PlayStation yeah. 4. You're not going to have all yeah. the cool stuff, but that cool stuff comes at a price of time, learning, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it just comes with that stuff. Yeah. I think that's a good, and that's a good thing. Like a good piece of, this is free advice. We're not charging for this. 
um, like if you're wanting to get into streaming, just do the bare bones sh shit. Just try it out. Like they're saying, like try it out on yeah. PlayStation, try it with just the basic stuff. And then if you decide this is a thing I actually want, then do, you know, get into all the overlays and all the, you know, animations and the badges and emotes and all that shit. Do that later, but just do the thing first, like do the actual streaming part. The, the best thing about uh, like now generation is there's so much free overlays, free panels. Like Nerd or Die, again, has amazing free panels. Nerd or Die has amazing free pop-up thing where it'll say your Twitch and your Twitter when you list every once in a while. Like they have all that stuff taken care of for you. You just gotta follow the instructions. Like yep. if you have a question, someone else had that question too, and you can Google it and you can figure out the reason. Yep. Actually, if you have a question, you're the first person to ever have that question. So Especially with you're OBS. alone in the world. Yep. I mean, I did Google what does Maligos's penis look like, and I didn't find a specific answer. But I think that was because it was a very specific question. It was a very niche. There's a niche market for that one. Very niche market. All right, we have one more question, and this one's actually kind of fun. Um, question comes from Anonymous. Um, I think their name is... Pi Bandit 83. Um, they want to know what is the worst ending of a video game you have ever played? What do you guys think? I've been thinking about this a lot. And I I don't know if I can think of like one that just actually upset me. Like disappointed um, you. I think of like endings that are make me sad in the but that's not like makes it bad. Like the ending of Life is Strange is fucking. I cried yeah i cried like a baby and so it's like i kind of hated it but like i didn't hate it i don't know man do you guys have ones that you actually hated yeah i know uh one that infuriated me was the ending to borderlands the original borderlands it was yeah. so anticlimactic did you guys play borderlands the oh OG? yeah so, I, I, yeah yeah spoiler yeah, alert because we have to say spoiler alert yeah. so you spend the entire game you know trying to find this vault of you know crazy loot um, and it's this epic thing that you're looking for. And then at the end, you fight this big boss. And then the ending is just, oh, the vault won't open. Yeah. And you're like, what the fuck is this? I spent this entire time finding this thing. And then you get there and it's like, mm -mm, nope. And then the game starts over. Like, okay. what? What Dude, is that? I actually just, you, that made me think, okay, there's two that I think of now. One is Shadows of Mordor. That fucking game ending, you go there and you're like, oh okay i'm doing this whatever and then you walk into an arena and you fight a guy as a quick time event and then the game's over and i wanted to start punching people you're like what and then the second one was final fantasy 10 on oh. like playstation 2 because i had played final fantasy 7 and was like oh the final boss is really fucking hard final fantasy 10 i don't know if you guys have ever played it i liked it the but game itself it. you beat you beat the first form of the boss and it's not very hard. And then you're invulnerable for the fight. Yeah. And I'm like, why is this easy mode? You motherfuckers. Yeah. That why did it just get easier? <laughs> yeah. Why did this happen like this? I, that, and I didn't like Titus. I thought the character was a little punk. And so there was a lot of that game. I didn't like, but the ending. Bad. I liked Titus. I thought it was cool. Um, comes to mind. Okay, um, one of the Halo games left on a cliffhanger that was really stupid. I think it was Halo Two. Yeah, Halo, Halo 2, Two left on a really big cliffhanger, and you're like, "What? What? Like this is stupid." And then you just played multiplayer and thought you're going to be an esports god. Um, and then after that, the the, the one I, I was really having problems too, Fallout Three. When so spoiler alert, when you beat Fallout Three, I'm pretty sure it's like there's a reactor or something, and you have to put yourself into the reactor or this mutant into the reactor or this girl or some I, I forget it, but I just remember being like, that's the end, and it's tough because Fallout has like all these cool stories, like one-off stories and really yeah. cool like like stories. So the main story I thought was gonna like be really cool and climactic. And it, and it was awful. It was awful. And then just like, all right, it's over. Great. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't really into. It. What's the opposite of this, you guys? What was one ending that's your favorite ending? Undertale. Okay. Odd. I've never played it. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna go into details, but like, there are a couple endings to Undertale depending on what you do, and like, one of the endings, I it completely blew my mind, and I did not expect, and like, I streamed it, and I just sat there, and I couldn't talk for like ten minutes because like that 
is a thing that just happened. Oh man, what is uh, some stuff? Uh, yeah, that I, I really like. I mean, there's so many great games, like like with endings. Uh, I mean, I, I, yeah, I go back to Horizon Zero Dawn. I really liked a lot of that ending and a lot of the stuff it set up for possible sequels and whatnot. Um, uh, the Last Guardian. That one, the ending of The Last Guardian blew my mind and had me crying for like 35 minutes. Um, that was another good one. Um, Life is Strange for me. Yeah, yeah. Big, big one I loved. Um, yeah, that's a good one. I can't, like, I, I, like Portal 2 was, oh, was really you... fun. I really like the ending of Portal 2. Yeah, Portal 2 had a great ending. Yeah. It was real good. I mean, the ending of Portal 1 is awesome, too. Yeah. I, I haven't played Portal I... 1, actually. Oh, that's great. I should check that the out. Cake is a lie, Geek Say. The cake is a lie. Man, yeah. F- now, man, The Last Guardian, the ending of that game was so good. Is that the one What's with crazy the, the about dog? it? Or the, yeah, whatever. like the. No, the, it dies. Whatever. We all know it dies. Trico. Maybe. But so I wasn't even playing the game. I was watching Gabe play it. And like, so I wasn't even that <sighs> invested in the game. And watching him beat the game, I. It was still like broke me. Like it was yeah. that good. Like it was still emotional. Like it was very, very good. Yeah. Uh, the ending of Hearthstone is pretty good because I always win. <laughs> the ending of Hearthstone is the first time you hit Legend and you're like, "Oh my God, I've done it! Okay. I've, I've done, done it!" The thing. <laughs> I have to do this next month. You mean I have to do this <laughs> next month? No. Damn it! I'm out. I'm done. Yeah, I think that's all I got for that question. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Why are you what broke I, this week? This is this is important. So this actually funny enough. I, I don't do this often, but this can tie back into a previous thing that we talked about earlier in cosplaying. So since I am a lazy piece of shit and I'm not going to make my own cosplay, I found the reason I'm broke this week is because you can buy a set of the Game of Thrones, the Kingsguard armor for thirty two hundred dollars, full set of armor. Oh, so cool. It's so sick. Did you guys look at this thing? Yeah, it's no, like I, I mean it's it's from the television show, like the armor is like that. And they're like some of the most iconic like images in the show because they have this gold armor that just stands out so much because they're like the guards that protect the king. They're pretty important people. So they get this gold shiny armor and it's so dope and it's so sick. Yeah. I want it. I've so I've never even seen Game of Thrones like at all. And still, this is so friggin' cool, dude. You, why have you never watched Game of Thrones? Because it's a show. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's a great show. Don't get me wrong. I've watched a lot of it, but like when people are like, yeah, I got it. I've read the books. It. I've watched the wow, show. You I just, nerd. I can't watch any shows. Like Try literally, hard. there's not. I can't think of the last time I watched a season of a show. Oh, Agritsuko. That was like the last one. That was those are all like 15 minutes long. that's the reason why i can't do i can't do it thirty two hundred dollars though that is insane that's insane yeah so i bought three of them um so i'm gonna give one to each of you as well so that's why i'm specifically broke this week i wonder how it like the, the cod pieces i wonder if it's gonna be snug on the wiener well i sent them your your wiener measurement okay cool I got those last night when you stayed the night at my house. <laughs> I woke up in the middle of the night and he's standing over my dick with a tape measure. And I'm like, what exactly is happening? Hey, and I, thought it... as... I woke up today and my office chair was missing. My I secondary mean, office chair. I don't know how that happened. It, that might've been an accident somehow. Weird. Weird that that's magically missing now. Dude, if that, if that was missing, I wouldn't be setting up goofy because my office chair is broken right now. <laughs> Oh God! Well, this is fun, guys. I had a good time. Yeah, thank you guys for having me again. Um, I'm hoping to be on the next one. Yeah, we. I know you will be for sure. Um, that's all I can say. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So, uh, where can everyone find you guys? <laughs> well, we should we should first pimp out Geekade. Where could they find Geekade? What's, that? What's Geekade? Um, it's this a new hip TV show that's coming to Canada. I heard. Oh hell yeah! No, guys, we are this podcast, and you can find Geekade on Twitter just at Geek Aid Podcast. You can find us on YouTube probably just by searching for Geek Aid because we're not cool enough to have our own URL yet. We still need to get those, what is it, 100 you need? 100 yeah. subscribers yeah. on YouTube? So guys, uh, if you like what we're doing, go on YouTube. Even if you don't watch it on YouTube, if you just like, if you listen to the podcast, just go give us one of those subscribers. And uh, yeah, you can find us on 
iTunes. Yeah, we're on what the Google one now too, right? What's it called? Google Play. Uh, I Spotify, I think. Know. Are we on Spotify? We're too? on Spotify. We are Spotify. on Spotify now. Yeah. I thought we were on the Google one too. So, I think yeah. we are on the Google one also. <laughs> we should be on all of your favorite podcast outlets. Just Geek Aid podcast on everywhere. Yep. Um, so we're getting easier to find. We're we're less. Our, we're uh, failing our stealth check, so we're pretty easy to find. That was a D and D joke. Yes, we know. You <laughs> you, you won you won it. I'm so. good at D and D jokes. Well, you can find me on Twitter at Rod underscore Johnston, and I am on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Rod underscore Johnston. You can find me, guys, uh, on twitch.tv slash geeksay. You can find me on YouTube uh, slash geeksay, and I'm on Twitter, YouTube, Twitter dot com Twitter. slash Twitter dot com slash geeksay, but with an extra H. Extra H on that one. One more H. And I'm Saucy Mailman. You can just find me anywhere on the internet. Just Look for Saucy Mailman, and I'll probably be there on all the Instagrams, the Twitters, the all the face pages, all those stuffs. So yeah, guys, thanks again. Uh, send your questions to geekaidpodcast at gmail.com so that we can give you guys our excellent advice for next week. But yeah, until then, um, we'll see you guys on Tuesday. Thank thanks you so guys. much, everyone. Bye.